Okay, so uh, today we have uh, with us Jia Wang speaking on uh, efficient zero knowledge proofs based on vector oblivious linear evaluation. Xiao is an assistant professor of computer science at Northwestern University. Uh, he was a postdoc with Vinod Baikuntanathan at MIT and Ran Kaneti at BU. He obtained his PhD at the University of Maryland with Jonathan Katz. His research interests uh, focus on applied cryptography, specifically designing efficient privacy preserving systems based on secure multi-party computation. He received a best paper award in applied cybersecurity at CSAW 2015 and IDES Compet competition award in 20 2015, uh, a human longevity uh, Inc. award for MPC in 2016 and ACM CCS best paper, paper award in 2017 and an ACM CCS best paper paper um, award runner up in 2021. Uh, that's fabulous. So over to you, Yao. Oh uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks Abita for the uh, introduction. So today I will talk about uh, uh, a new type of zero knowledge proofs uh, that are interactive and not very succinct. But it, all, but it comes with some other features that uh, might be more desirable than many of the many of the other zero knowledge proofs. Uh, so if you have questions throughout the talk, please like feel free to interact interrupt me at any time, and uh, I can uh, I can answer your questions. Like uh, let's let's not wait, uh, wait until the last to uh, to to like uh, to see any of the questions. Uh, so well, so I, I'm pretty sure that uh, for this audience, everybody knows what the definition of zero knowledge proofs. So I'm not going to go through the details of the zero knowledge proofs. Uh, uh, so essentially, like uh, we need, uh, uh, well, so essentially like, uh, like uh, so we can, we can build zero knowledge proofs as a kind of a emulation of a trusted party who can get a, a, a kind of a witness from one party and try to kind of verify a predicate on top of it and tell, and tell the other party whether it is uh, uh, valid or not. So there has been uh, quite uh, a lot of, uh, Different types of zero knowledge proofs, uh, and uh, this and here I just list, listed a subset of uh, the recent uh, popular approaches. For example, uh, for example, we have all different kind of the uh, We have uh, various kinds of uh, uh, protocols based on IOP, and there are also recently some kind of combinations of the uh, snarks and IOP. We also have like a something based on GKR protocol, well, and also some kind of uh, hybrid combination between the snarks and the GKR. Uh, we have uh, IPC in the head uh, uh, protocols, and we also have, for example, zero, zero knowledge couple circuit protocols. So all of them, uh, they have different trade-offs in terms of, for example, whether you need a trusted setup, the proof size, the verification time, uh, the assumption, uh, and uh, like interactivity, and proof size, or different kind of stuff. So it's actually the space is getting. It's like uh, there are many different ways to kind of uh, to see where, which which protocol is maybe more useful, which protocol is may not be more suitable in the in the application. Uh, and in terms of the classification, like uh, like features, there are also different ways to classify like uh, like categorize these protocols. For example, we could have uh, uh, interactive protocols uh, and the non-interactive protocols. So in the non-interactive case, then like a prover can compute one message and send to the ver to send it to the verifier. And in the interactive case, I mean, like a uh, like a uh, let's say if I mean if uh, if the interactive protocol is public coin, of course we can make it non-interactive. But not every protocol can be made uh, public coin. For example, if the like uh, the the efficient version of the one of their knowledge based on couple circuit would not be cannot be made inter uh, cannot be made uh, non-interactive. So that would be something that uh, is more like a hard cannot be made non-interactive non type of interactive protocols. And uh, for example, like uh, for the non-interactive protocols, the prover doesn't really need to know the identity of the verifier when they do most of the computation. But for interactive protocols, the prover can only prove to like uh, very likely just one verifier at a time, and they have to know the like the ver the identity of the verifier at the time of the computation. So in terms of the communication or the proof size, we have, uh, for example, succinct, uh, say maybe it is a constant proof size or maybe a polylog. We have a somewhat succinct, say something like Lihero, which is like a sublinear to the circuit size, but uh, uh, 
uh, but it's not really like, a, but it's not uh, something like a polylog. And we also have non-succinct synced protocols. And in terms of the efficiency, uh, which is essentially like, for example, like what is the operation that we need to compute per gate? So here, like, a, like, a, some, like a, for example, let's say for snarks, it's usually like a, the number of operations that we need for each gate is, for example, we might need a, a constant number of op, like a constant number of public key encryption for each gate. So, th so the number of public key encryption would be linear to the circuit size. So this would be like a, usually would consume a lot of computational power. Some of things that could be slightly better would be uh, purely if it's uh, like a, does not need that much public key operation, and but it might need a like a number theoretic transformation on something linear to the circuit size. For example, like uh, this is also quite uh, common. Well, the best that we could hope for is probably something that is, that is as efficient as constant number of symmetric key operations, uh, like uh, per, for each of the gate. So this would be like a like a I guess like a it's like it will it will be difficult to see like how to get a better than this in practice, like uh, from the practical perspective. And in terms of the classification from trusted setup, we also we have uh, oh, like uh, some protocols. Uh -huh. Yeah, what is NTT? Number theoretic transformation. It's like the uh, faster forward transformation works I on see. real numbers. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's like uh, works on some fi finite field that uh, has certain characteristic. Uh, so typically, how big uh, is this finite field? Uh, so I think uh, you just need a P and the two to the N has uh, like, a, so essentially you just need a field such that it has like a, as the root of uh, unity in the in like with respect to the field, so that you can compute like a it's like the it's like a, a, a like a, so it, as long as you have like a nth root of unity, then you can do like a FFT like operation. So like uh, I think one of the property that would work is that if uh, if it is uh, uh, if it, it has some kind of uh, like it, like I think so, like uh, something like it is co prime to 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 the n plus something or. Uh, like like a, like a Q, like it doesn't like there's no like a requirement on the size of it. It's just that not every not every prime could work. There are only a small handful set of primes that would uh, allow NTT operation. I see. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's like a like a high degree of uh, I, I can I, I can't remember the technical term, but it's like a it's like a it's like essentially like you just need a, a like a sufficient number like you. Like uh, as long as like the ns like ns unit like ns uh, like uh, ns uh, prime like a unit ns root of unity exists, and then you can use entity. Yeah, yeah, it's like FFT where you you have like a e to the j uh, t or something like that over over theta or something. Yeah, I can't remember the math. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, and uh, in terms of a trusted setup, we have uh, we, are, we have some protocol that doesn't need any trusted setup. We have uh, well, like uh, a lot of uh, snarks now only need a universal trusted setup, universal trusted setup, and uh, and uh, and the like the the, the first generation, many of them require a per program, so per statement trusted setup, and then here then you have like for example updatable and non updatable or different kind of categorization. Uh, so these are mostly like a uh, pretty like uh, popular, but the last one uh, has been mostly forgotten until recently. That is the memory requirement that is needed to prove a circuit. So uh, so for a circuit, so one major of the circuit, one metric of a circuit is the circuit size. And another metric of a circuit is the memory that is needed to evaluate the circuit, which could potentially be much, much smaller than the circuit size. We do not need the memory linear to the circuit size to measure, to, to, to evaluate the circuit. However, most of the zero knowledge proofs actually need the memory size linear to the circuit size. But the best that we should hope we could hope for is something that is linear to the uh, to the me to the memory needed to evaluate the circuit in the clear. So uh, so there is a, often a big gap between what the, what we could do and the, what like uh, what uh, like uh, what is do what what is the current uh, state of the art and what we could hopefully achieve uh, over here. Uh, so, 
like I'm I'm ordering it uh, somewhat in this way. So like uh, so this one is uh, least uh, has has got a li the least attention because like uh, uh, well like this doesn't seem to be a, that much a problem because like the efficiency was too bad that we don't really need to we won't really need to compute large circuits. But now let's say like let's say for po many popular applications, let's say if you want to compute billions of gates, then the memory size has to be proportional to the circuit size. That could be a bottleneck. Over here, especially if you want to compute something that, that is a very, very uh, complicated statement. Okay. Uh, and uh, to motivate uh, interactive protocols a little bit more, uh, we could also think uh, like a look at uh, two different types of uh, two different settings uh, where zero knowledge proof is used. So for the non-interactive setting, uh, it would be something like a, a part, like a asynchronous setting. We also have one prover that is proven to a bunch of verifiers, and the prover doesn't really know which verifier is going to verify it. And another setting would be more like a synchronous setting, where like the prover is going to just prove to this particular verifier, and once like once it is done, like then like the like like a, like, a, like a, the prover is not going to, does not need to prove to multiple verifiers. Uh, there could be some settings like this. Uh, uh, so in this uh, in this talk, I'm going to mostly focus on this one. Which is uh, more restricted. It's like uh, it's not uh, so in terms of uh, like uh, the setting. It is like it can only prove to one verifier at a time. So it's uh, like uh, it's not that uh, like uh, like if the prover wants to prove to multiple verifiers, then the prover needs to prove to the, each of them in, like uh, repeatedly individually. Uh, however, it uh, has other uh, uh, like a benefit. So the so this is uh, well like uh, not a very good okay. And in terms of the communication. Uh, the communication is at most one field element per gate, uh, and we also in the second half of the talk it will be so it will be reduced to c to the power of o point seven five, which is a real number. But this is what we got in that paper. Okay, so we could uh, do sublinear communication or even slightly better. And in terms of the efficiency, uh, so for every gate we essentially just need to do a constant number of uh, block cipher calls. And a constant number of uh, operation on extension field for Boolean circuit, and uh, both of them are hardware acceleratable. It's like uh, it's like uh, both of them has like a like a instruction level acceleration. So in terms of the computational efficiency, it's like a very very efficient. And in, and and in terms of the memory, we were able to achieve memory uh, of the prover such that it is actually linear to what it uh, is needed to evaluate the circuit in the clear. So it means that let's say. If the circuit, let's say, if we want, let, let's say we, let's say we want to prove a, uh, sh let's say, shard two fifty six. Although the circuit could could be arbitrarily long, but uh, we do not need to remember, like, um, let's say, if a block is is a hash, then we do not need to remember any of the wires in the block. So it actually, uh, it could be evaluated in a constant uh, number of memory for, let's say, if we want to evaluate shard two fifty six on a very long string. So uh, and uh, so so if uh, for to to prove a circuit that like that, our our prover also doesn't need uh, like a uh, like a much memory. The memory is also just like a a constant uh, factor of the blow up uh, with respect to the what is needed in the clear. And in the end, uh, well, like uh, because our protocol is interactive, I guess like it's not probably not that uh, surprising that we don't need trusted setup and we can get used to security. Oh, with the static, uh, static security, and uh, and in terms of the computation, it's uh, I would say it's like essentially what you could uh, hope for, like uh, I, like uh, like uh, you might be able to do better like, if you think about like information theoretically, like uh, protocols. I mean, like, but it's not clear it's in a two-party setting. It's not clear how much better in practice that you can get uh, uh, faster, faster than this. Uh, so in terms of the technique, uh, so I'm, I won't talk about the application here. Instead, I will talk about the uh, more recent work that was just uh, presented in ACCS 2022 on uh, how to get the sublinear communication. And it's in terms of the technique, so we, I mean, the technique actually is uh, very related to uh, these works on MPC. So, uh, and I will talk about the like the relationship uh, on the MPC like uh, after I'm, I'm done with the first part. Okay. Well, so the first part, uh, uh, so at the very beginning, we need uh, like uh, very efficient protocols for us to generate uh, uh, correlated randomness, for example, back to OLE and things like that. And uh, once in that hybrid, then we, like, uh, we can construct efficient zero-knowledge proofs with uh, 
uh, very efficient communication and complication. Uh, I will talk about all of them uh, like one by one. Okay. Oh, uh, so the the basic building block that we need is information theoretic max. Um, so essentially, like the verifier has a global key that can authenticate multiple messages, and for each message that the prover wants to authenticate, uh, like the prover is going to get a MAC and the verifier is going to get a key, uh, such that it has a very simple linear relationship. So if the prover wants to authenticate multiple values. Uh, the like the delta is going to be the same, but the k and m will will be different. Uh, so this is uh, well, like uh, so. This was originally used for maliciously secure multi-party computation, uh, but uh, like uh, but here we can we, we, like uh, here we are going to use it for like zero knowledge proofs. Uh, so, like uh, to open a value, like the prover can just, uh, for example, just send the MAC to the verifier, and then the verifier like can check that whether whether this relationship holds or not. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, any question on like uh, on, like IT max? This is a uh, uh, this is like a, a this is a pretty common like a uh, uh, building block in malicious and uh, malicious MPC and two party computation. Uh, well, so there are some properties that are very nice on top on top of uh, this information theoretic Mac. Well, first is that it is additively homomorphic, meaning that if we construct uh, like a two like a like a two 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 set of uh, like a like a Mac the value, then we can actually compute the Mac of the uh, some of them easily by everybody just compute like uh, summing up their Macs and keys and the values locally. We can also add a constant value or multiply a constant value like up like locally. So 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 it's like additively homomorphic with all the properties that we would expect. So we could uh, so by the recent PC like a pseudo random correlation generator line of works is actually uh, pretty efficient to generate uh, this type of correlation on random values. So if you want to generate a random randomly authenticated uh, values based on IT Mac, it's actually very very efficient. For example, like uh, well, this number is actually already uh, slightly updated. I think uh, like uh, our latest implementation is slightly faster than these two numbers. Um, so like, but uh, anyway, like I, I think the the main takeaway is that uh, uh, like uh, if we want to compute like uh, the bind like uh, like uh, this like authenticated values on random uh, random bits, that right, uh, it's on the order of tens of nanoseconds. And if we want to compute, uh, say. Uh, authenticate the values on some uh, like a like a, for some prime field that it's uh, like a larger prime field that it's like a, like a, like a less than one hundred nanoseconds. I think this one is actually significantly improved based on some more recent work. Uh, so our high level idea is that uh, we are going to uh, first use like the so so once we have this, we can essentially authenticate a value, and uh, and we are going to authenticate. Uh, like all of the value in the circuit, and then we are going to prove that all of the gates are computed correctly. So let's like uh, so at the very beginning, let's let's start with we can start with a bunch of random uh, like authenticated values that are essentially just vector OLEs, and then the prover has a uh, well the prover has the witness. Okay, and uh, so for the prover to commit to the witness, what the prover needs to do is to find the difference between the witness. And the randomly authenticated the values, and the both party can just use uh, use the additive homomorphism to compute the MAC of the like authenticated value of the uh, on on the witness. So that would give us uh, like the authenticated input, and then we just need to like uh, compute uh, like uh, so. Our first remember that our first step we want to get the authenticated value of every gate, and so we can essentially like try to obtain these uh, values gate by gate. So if we did the addition gate, uh, the, the two parties has the authentication of the input wires, then the two then the, then the part two party can just like locally compute the authentication of the output wire. Let's say I'm like I can for example draw a input circuit as an example. Uh, maybe let me make it a little bit more complicated. Maybe let, let me see this, okay? Let me say this is add. We can have a multiplication. We can have a multiplication here. Let's say add. Okay. So th let's say this would be the witness, and the, maybe this is the output. Uh, so like uh, so from this from the first step, we are going to first authenticate all of the input, 
And then like uh, we can just like uh, go through the circuit following any topological order that is uh, that that is uh, uh, will work. Okay. And if we need the addition gate, then like because we already have the authentication of the input, we can just use the homomorphism to get the authentication of the output wire. If it is a multiplication gate, then we then there's no no homomorphism. So even if we have the authentication of the input wire, we will not be able to get the authentication of the output wire. So in this case. We are just going to first in the first step. We are just going to trust the, the the prover to give us the authentication of the output value. So the prover knows the clear text value of the input wires. The prover can just compute the, what the output could be and understand the difference of this value and the uh, random authentication. And that will give everybody D, and every and the two parties can just like apply this D to this random value to get the authentication of the output value. And of course, the prover may cheat. If the prover cheat, then the authentication of these two values and this value will not constitute a multiplication or end relationship. But that's fine. We are going to check that relationship in the end. Okay. Uh, so we can just up, like iteratively perform this either this operation or this operation until we are like uh, we are done with the whole we are done with the whole circuit. And once we are done with the whole circuit, essentially the two parties will hold a authentication of every wire. In the circuit, uh, uh, in the circuit, and uh, if it is an addition gate, then we know that it is correct because, like, uh, the, it's just local computation. Uh, so we just need to check that the, all of the modification are computed correctly. Uh, so essentially, like, uh, so the, what what we would have is that uh, so we have uh, this. So for for every of the input, like, uh, we uh, both parties collectively have all these values uh, with some with the, like the linear relationship, which I'm going to put. Uh, uh, like so, we just want to check that, that this relationship holds. Okay. Uh, so in our, I, think I have a question. So, uh, for this multiplication gate, the prover is going to reveal this value d, right? And uh, d, if d is wrong, then what? What is the check at this point uh, that uh, v so we is? we haven't done any check yet. Yeah, we haven't done any check yet. But we and, uh, the, so if if uh, if d is correct, then we are good. If d is wrong. That we are that is not going to be sound. So we needed to do something to check that D is correct. So the way that we do we do we are we're going to check D is correct is to going to check that uh, the relationship uh, all of the end gates are correct. And that's what I what I'm going to talk about. Uh, what I was going to focus in the next few slides. Uh, so yeah. So so we are so 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 we are going to talk about the check. Uh, if that's the question. Are you I want to use some polynomial huge degree polynomial there for the check again using some linearity. OK, let, I'm guessing go on. <laughs> oh, OK, uh, yeah, yeah, let me. Uh, so so yeah, well, so in the Wolverine paper, so we actually uh, so we start from uh, uh, so we start. So the people actually like uh, start from a very simple idea. Like uh, uh, we can do uh, we already know how to do maliciously secure two party computation. Like uh, nicely, for example, we can we can we have tiny ot, right? Tiny ot already give us a very nice protocol, and uh, so one way to think about I mean tiny ot is essentially a maliciously secure GMW protocol, and uh, in term and when we look at uh, this protocol as a maliciously secure GMW, and uh, and uh, restrict uh, like the input only to come from one party, then GMW becomes constant round because in the like uh, in the shear recovery, only one party needs to send values. Like uh, like uh, we don't need to send the values on both direction because the one one party doesn't have any like uh, input. So essentially, it's like uh, if we just take tiny o, tiny ot and the strip of like and the, and the only let one party to have input that will already become constant round, and then the rest is to optimize. Uh, that's how we actually arrive uh, uh, to uh, like the first protocol, uh, like a Wolverine. And because of that, actually in the first protocol, what we do is that we are just going to do a like a simple fat kicking argument uh, to prove the correctness of the triples. So, uh, so essentially, like uh, what we are have, we are, we are, what we are given is that we are just given a bunch of uh, multiplication triples that may not be correct. So I means like the I gate in the circuit, I is multiplication gate in the circuit. So we just want to check that uh, all of this multiplication relationship holds. Well, this is pretty much just a like a like a packeting problem. So how to do that? 
uh, we essentially uh, can just let the two parties and compute a bunch of uh, many, many, many uh, randomly, random like uh, multiplication triples will prove a claim to be correct. So like uh, we don't guarantee correctness because we are going to let the prover to compute the multiplication. And then we can just use a like a pretty classical probabilistic arguments based on cut, cut and choose, uh, cut and bucketing to argue that, uh, like to argue the correctness. So in detail, so what we do is that, uh, so we, so let's say if we want to check C number of gate, we are going to uh, prepare C times a B, small factor B plus D number of triples. These triples will be prepared by the prover and the prover may not uh, compute them correctly. We will first randomly open D number of triples and check that they are correct and that they will be burned. They will be just completely open. And after that, we are just we are going to sh randomly shuffle the rest of, rest of the triples and use one of and and like uh, and randomly backing them into C number of bucket each with uh, B triples. And then we can just use uh, like we can just do like a triple checking by uh, like uh, we can just like a. Uh, Review some of the values and check that whether it is correct. Uh, the the check has a guarantee that only if both of them are incorrect. If both of them, if one of them is correct, one of them is incorrect, uh, it, the check will abort. And then, it, like uh, there is actually a somewhat. It's like a much simpler like a, like analysis. We can show that uh, like regardless of what the prover do, like if prover cheat on m multiplication gate, then prover can like pass the check with only this probability. And uh, and then we can just carefully set B to be some value to have this uh, to have this particle. So this is pretty much like a, a, I guess maybe like I'm kind of a, like a, like a making my own work uh, some too trivial, but it's pretty much just uh, take the tiny OT particle, apply the state of the art uh, building blocks, and then perform a try to optimize the probabilistic game in tiny OT. Because like now it's zero knowledge, it's only zero knowledge, so we do not need to kind of uh, worry too much about the privacy on the proof, like uh, from the verifier's perspective. If uh, if the check doesn't uh, uh, that doesn't pass, then it's fine because it's proof of cheating, so we don't need to care about more, uh, care about proof of privacy in that case. So we just need to do one level of bucketing uh, in, the, in, in 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 like in the in case of the zero knowledge proofs. So this is pretty much like uh, the philosophy of the of the of the Wolverine protocol. Uh, well, this is this sounds like a, like a somewhat uh, it sounds like a overkill, and it is actually indeed an overkill. This like a checking these relationships can be much better. Uh, so after this work, they are actually so for example, so in the mac and cheese paper, they actually they were able to still like uh, maintain like uh, the boundary of this like additive homomorphism, and they were able to use some uh, ideas from. Uh, Fully linear PCP to do this check more efficiently, and uh, so in our check, uh, so we take another line. So we are not going to look at this. Uh, uh, we are not going to look at this commitment as black box. We are going to break, look into the commitment, and that's how we get a even like a even even faster uh, check for all the gates. And uh, so that's where uh, and that's where we I will spend more time that, that I want to talk about. Okay. So essentially, what we are what's happening is that. Uh, we have like a three values. We have three values, three bunch of values for alpha, beta, and gamma wires. And for each of them, we already know that this relationship holds. And we want to check whether this relationship is true or not. So what we could do is that we are going just going to compute this. Uh, what, we, what we want to do is that we are just going to compute this uh, thing and then we can see what it is, okay? So the like uh, we can let the verifier compute this value where well, verifier has all the keys and the verifier has the delta so this is uh, completely computable by the verifier uh, and uh, uh, this this all, both of them are mac so the prover can completely compute this value and the prover has mac and under the, the actual value so, so the prover can also compute this value uh, times uh, delta is known by the verifier and uh, under this term is not really computable by any party, but if the prover is not cheating, then this value is supposed to be zero. So essentially, like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like uh, so, so, so we have a relationship, which, uh, so, so why, uh, I, like, so, so we have a relationship that is supposed to be hold, like, uh, as long as, uh, like, uh, like, like, probably let me take a step back, okay? So we have the left hand side, but it's not clear why it is equal to the right hand side. So what we could do is just to plug in this relationship, relationship 
into in, into this one. So this would give us uh, m of alpha uh, plus uh, omega alpha times delta times m of beta plus omega beta times delta, and then minus m of gamma plus w gamma times delta and then times delta. That's what like uh, we get this. This is something that the verifier can compute, and this equals to this by plugging this equation into uh, and replacing all of the k. And uh, if we expand this, 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 like uh, this whole thing, then we will get how many terms? So this is two terms and two terms. This will give us four terms, and we have two terms over here. So totally six terms. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So so these six terms are essentially these six terms. And for these six terms, this is known by the prover, this is known by the prover, this is known by the verifier, and this term is supposed to be zero if what we want to check it holds. So essentially, like by representing the values as like this, we convert the problem of checking multiplication, which is a degree two relationship, into checking whether like all these values is a degree one relationship with respect to delta. So if we look at this relationship as a polynomial over uh, as a polynomial with respect to delta, we are, we are look at delta as the as the variable of the polynomial. Then we are just checking whether this polynomial is a degree one polynomial or not. So we we convert the problem of checking like a, a two degree relationship into a one degree relationship. And checking one degree relationship is uh, is fairly easy. So what we can do, we can just come up. So what we could do is that we can just preprocess in the preprocessing phase. We can generate a random degree one relationship, and then they can just like uh, use one one of the degree one relationship to check against the other degree one relationship and see whether it uh, checks out, whether the result is uh, whether the result checks out as a degree one relationship. So degree one relationship is uh, fairly easy to check. So this would uh, like, uh, but uh, like, however, like. Uh, well, like, uh, but then this preprocessing is still somewhat uh, expensive. We do not want to do this kind of preprocessing for each of the gates. Uh, but uh, so that's so so how can we do that? So well, so so because the circuit has many many gates, it turns out that we can also check all of the degree one relationships all together. So essentially, like, uh, so like uh, with many many gates, uh, so each of the gates uh, would uh, give us a degree one relationship that we would like to check. And we would like to check whether all of the relationships are degree one. So we, what we want to do is that the two party can just come up with some random coin and use this, this random coin to do a linear combination all of all of the degree one relationships that, we, that, that they want to check. So like uh, so this a, a0 and a1 and the b's are the degree one relationships that we compute from the previous slides for each of the case. And we want to check whether they hold, whether they like are linear relationships. So we can, so after the provers commit all of the values, we can let the verifier picking uh, this random coefficient. Uh, like for, there, there are multiple ways to come, to come up with this correlation, like with this coefficient with uh, like a different uh, concrete uh, randomness. And then we can use this coefficient to, to do a linear combination across all of the like uh, degree one relationships. And uh, that would give us uh, a single degree one relationship that we want to check. And uh, with a probabilistic argument, we can argue it's actually we can show that uh, well, so this a zero, a one, and b uh, constitute a degree one relationship if and only if all of the relationships are linear relationships. Uh, so it, like if all of the kinds are random, then the thundness would be big O one over the ex one of the field size of the extension field, like uh, all uh, of the field size of these values. And then we can just use some somewhat slow method to compute one of the triple and then use that to mask uh, the degree one relationship that we want to check uh, for, for everything. Uh, so it will be pretty cheap. So in the end, uh, for each gate, we just need to compute uh, this relationship. So remember that these values are extension field element. So we need to do extension field multiplication, but uh, that's fine. That's like uh, not too expensive. And then we need to do a linear combination of all of them, which is still just field extension field and computation. And then at the very end, we need we need to compute a one triple, but one degree one relationship, and then just use it to mask the rest of the value and the check. 
So it turns out to be pretty computationally efficient. <coughs> so here are some uh, <coughs> benchmark results uh, at the time where we submit the paper. Well, at the time where we published the paper, sorry. <coughs> So, uh, so in terms of the, let's say in the in the Wolverine protocol, let's say if we have a 50 megabit of network, uh, so for Boolean circuit, it would need roughly this would be like 500 nanosecond per gate. But when we go to Quicksilver, it actually can be like a like a like a this is for five thread and even for one for four thread, we already get like a like almost ten times better in terms of the in terms in terms of the running time. So this is a combination of better computation and also smaller communication. <clears throat> so, uh, so these protocols are pretty affordable because we literally doesn't really need uh, much, like uh, we don't need any like a heavy computation. All of them are just like lightweighted computation. So whatever I should here, I just like a field operation and extension field. And uh, in generation of this VOLE, we need a lot of uh, AES for to extend randomness. And uh, in the end, like uh, we could also run them on the like the smallest. Uh, now instance on uh, now like a stable instance on Amazon, they are like a, like a few cents per hour, few US cents per hour. I guess the I guess I don't know maybe due to inflation maybe now it's a little bit more expensive. I I don't know whether they adjust the the cost uh, here, but uh, it's like few cents per hour. Like uh, we our implementation supports uh, like a different kind of uh, architecture of CPU, and even for this kind of very weak, so this instance only have one gigabyte of memory, and even for this kind of uh, like uh, uh, instance, we can actually still compute like a like a circuit of a very large size, and the speed uh, we can still achieve a speed like for example something like a five to seven megabyte mega like a million gate per second. So this is already this is like slightly slower than like what we can do over here. But it is like super cheap. For example, given just one cent, it's like on average, one cent would like a one US cent would allow us to compute like tens of billions of gates. So ARM is very very cheap uh, on Amazon, so it actually boosts up the like uh, the affordability a lot. But it's slightly like a, like a, like slower. Yeah. So so for arithmetic gate, the computation is like a, is like a, a little bit more costly because like the computation like integer modular prime. Is more costly than extension field multiplication, so it's actually uh, slightly slower and it's like a slightly costlier. But the, anyway, so regardless of the type of the circuit and the instance, we like a, like a, we could always achieve like a billions of gate per US cent, which is uh, pretty good. And uh, in particular, uh, at the time of uh, I at the time when I pre pre prepared this. Uh, uh, talk like a, a like a grandiose size the coffee uh, like latte uh, was like uh, roughly like a, like a, like a three to four dollars and that would actually translate to uh, quite a lot of uh, bullying uh, bullying gate that to, to compute so one cup of coffee the cost of one cup of co coffee would uh, allow you to compute this number of end gate which is uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, so we also compared uh, like uh, the performance of with other like uh, protocols, um, um, like uh, so. I mean, the, this like uh, the comparison like uh, there are multiple like uh, so. So the Wolverine, Mac and Cheese, and our protocols are all interactive, and the Virgo is not uh, Virgo is not interactive. So depending on how you would uh, how depending on the application, you may or may not want to use our protocol, and you may pre actually prefer a non-interactive protocol like Virgo. However. If your setting is uh, flexible enough to use an interactive protocol, then actually, like interactive protocol can be uh, like uh, could be much faster. And here, actually, uh, so I had uh, I I have uh, this line, which is a which seems to be much better than this circuit. And uh, I will talk about this optimization uh, a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe maybe I should also talk about the memory memory usage. So, for example, for this matrix multiplication case, it actually contains uh, ten to the power nine. Like we have, it contains one billion like multiplication gates. Uh, so for Virgo, it actually needed to use memory linear to the circuit size, uh, and uh, like uh, actually actually would need uh, like a, a, roughly a hundred and fifty gigabyte of memory. But for us, we actually just need one gigabyte of memory because uh, because of the fact that we could like forget part of the computation when it is done. So we can actually get uh, like a very small memory footprint. 
Uh, yeah, so now I'm going to talk about this a uh, uh, little bit like a further optimization in Quicksilver where we can compute the polynomial in a better way. Uh, so like uh, in the... We also uh, have some setup, right? The Margo work, that will also require some setup because it is non-interactive. That, that um, will also work I, in your favor, right? Um, I think uh, we also like uh, it only, I think it needs a random oracle, but it doesn't need anything more than random oracle. And uh, we also need a random oracle uh, at the at the like a lowest level of the protocol. But I don't I don't think Virgo need anything more than that random random oracle. Yeah. So this is based. Uh, this is like a GKR uh, like a style uh, zero knowledge. It's not like a zk snarks. So it doesn't actually doesn't need a CIS. Thank it you. doesn't need a stru structured CIS. It just need a, a like a random oracle. So it's a pretty pretty nice. Yeah. And I, and then I think they have a. Uh, the authors actually have some follow-up works. Uh, I, I either this uh, probably this year crypto, where they actually they were able to like uh, have like even better like running time and the communication. But uh, but uh, but uh, like for them like one of the big issue. I mean here I guess, I guess the emphasis is that uh, the memory is like uh, is very high and, the, and we are not doing some kind of uh, very complicated computation yet. It's just a big matrix multiplication. And uh, now think about. Uh, Say neural net neural net inference that would include so many modifications of matrices and so many other stuff. So it would be unclear how much memory that is is needed. Well, and it all goes back to the fact that many of the zero knowledge proof require memory linear to the circuit size. But uh, we would ideally want memory that is linear to what is needed to evaluate the circuit. Many of the MPC protocol actually only require memory. Well, many, many of the MPC protocol only, only require memory linear to the to something roughly on the order of what it is needed to evaluate the circuit, except uh, some of the malicious protocols. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, and in a, uh, at the very beginning, I was saying that the protocols are often linear size and at most one field element. So actually, so sometimes we can actually get better than linear size. And then we can get sublinear size uh, combination. Well, now it's actually not often. We can always get uh, uh, linear size. But uh, uh, in the context of quick uh, of quicksilver, we can actually get uh, sublinear size zero knowledge if there are some structures in the statement. So essentially, uh, we are looking at we are looking at uh, like uh, some uh, some some part of we are looking at whether we can kind of extract some part of the. Uh, of the circuit in the in, in the statement as uh, and whether we can model them as polynomials. So we come up with this idea because we were kind of uh, trying to look at uh, like a like a like a so like one field per element is already very nice. So we were trying to kind of compare with what was happening in like a MPC. So in couple circuit, we were able to achieve like half gate, and after that, like people went on the one hand try to reduce the communication by breaking the lower bound. And on the other, other hand, they were trying to also kind of uh, try to garble multiple gate at, at, at the same time. So that's what we are trying to do over here. So we are also trying to kind of see whether we can prove multiple gate at the same time. And then it, uh, it reminds us uh, of this talk that uh, uh, some people was given in one of the workshop where they were saying that uh, how to garble a, a polynomial a formula uh, potentially better. So we were saying that, okay, maybe we can see whether we can extend the Quicksilver uh, by proving polynomials better. And it turns out that actually it is, uh, we can get much, much better results. So essentially, let's say if we have a, a, a set of polynomials and the, the highest degree of the polynomial is degree is D and all of the polynomials are like a, have takes, uh, like a, like takes a subset of these N variables. So we like, a, so all of, so, so all of this, uh, like, a, like uh, these polynomials uh, input are from this uh, subset of n variables, then actually we can prove all of this polynomial in communication linear to the size of the witness and linear to the highest degree of all of the polynomial. It is independent of the number of polynomials that we want to check. So this is like a super nice. Uh, so essentially the high level idea is that, uh, so this is the, the quicksilver uh, relationship. This is like if you want to remember Quicksilver, just remember this line. This is pretty much uh, uh, the line that you need to remember. So what we want to do is that okay. So uh, let's say if we, like uh, we can generalize it a little bit by instead of computing a 
kind of a simple degree one, like a, a simple like multiplication relationship, we could imagine that we come we want to compute a more complicated uh, multiplication relationship, which is essentially an inner product. So like uh, if n equals to two, then it becomes like uh, essentially the multiplication. But now we want to look at uh, a, a inner product. This is like the most like the first step in the, in in terms of the generalization. And it turns out that uh, this formula can also be directly generalized uh, to this in this setting. So well, so like uh, so like the multiplication of this, we will just be it will just be converted into this format, and uh, we can kind of uh, we can apply this. We can plug in f and the relationship of k with m into the into it, and then it will actually give us. We kind of carefully arrange them. It will give us this value. Well, it's like uh, you can verify it offline, but all it that matters is that. Uh, uh, like uh, like we can convert the checking of this any degree to relationship like inner product or something that is uh, let's say some as long as it's degree two we can actually write it in this way. Well, this value is known by the prover. This value is also known by the prover, and this is delta. And there are like if it is uh, and there are supposed to be no other terms over here. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, how is the polynomial written in that particular form? C zero plus summation. This form. Yeah, is so this any like polynomial a, can be written like that. So like so, this is the first step. Uh, the any polynomial will be on the next step. So here I'm just trying to do okay. a somewhat uh, easier like extension that would be like a uh, doing multiple uh, like a uh, it would be like something like an inner product here. I see. So this so would it's be. More yeah. like, it's more like instead of having just only one multiplication gate, you are considering more gates and like considering a sub circuit sort of thing and then uh, checking it. Yeah, so this is the first step. This is the first okay. this is like the like the simple extension and the, this is like it is easier to imagine that it would work. This would work. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, if we have a more complicated polynomial, then we would need to first write it in a kind of a somewhat uh, like a like a weird way that we want to we want to ex we want to kind of uh, if we are given a general polynomial we would want to like uh, write it uh, in some way such that uh, like it's a sum of all like a g of h where g of h is a polynomial of uh, like are the terms where each of the terms have a degree exactly h for example it can take some of the like multiplication of some of the values but it like the degree should be exactly h and then, and then we take like we kind of want to kind of categorize the all different kind of terms into different groups and each of the groups should be like in each of the group, they should all have the same degree, like in terms of the multiplicity. And then like what do we want to we want to check is to like uh, is to kind of expand this term. So we kind of uh, compensate the degree of each different term with uh, like uh, with D minus H. And then this multiplication would have a like uh, the same degree. And we were under this would be a, we could in general write like extend this. And, and we will be able to represent it in some different way where it is always delta to the h times some a to the h. This could be done using like a polynomial interpolation uh, kind of stuff. So this would uh, like require a much more complicated computation. Uh, and then like uh, like the ideas can be extended uh, like uh, more or less like uh, naturally like uh, after like once we write the polynomial in this way. However, uh, I guess one thing that I want to mention is that not all polynomial has a efficient representation of a GH. So it's this this technique may not actually works for all of the polynomials. Some polynomial actually would uh, give us a very large expansion of GH. So that in that kind of polynomial, this technique is not really suitable. But for many nature tech, like uh, operations, this one is actually works uh, very nicely. Yeah, uh, so say so, so for example, it would be like, uh, so this is a, uh, a concrete example how it would be used. For example, let's say if we have a small number of wires, and uh, like uh, each of the and uh, each of the output wire could be represented as uh, the input some kind of combination of the input wires such as the highest degree is some bounded value, and then our communication is just uh, linear to the input and the in number of input wire, number of output wire, and the highest degree of all of the polynomials. It's kind of uh, 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 yeah, this is like a, how it uh, looks like. OK, uh, let me quickly go through the Andaman protocol, which is like uh, the latest uh, uh, advancement. So in the previous protocol, like, uh, the best that you could do is linear. If the circuit is uh, like, very bad, it doesn't have the ma much structure, then you can, the best you can do is just linear. 
And the end man, we can actually get uh, in general sublinear communication. And we are using heavier tools as well. So essentially, like, uh, so we start from SIMD circuit. So, so we want to consider a setting where like we have, uh, we have many, many sub circuits that we want to compute. The circuit structure is the same, but it comes with different, uh, each comes with different uh, uh, input. For example, let's say if we have a shark, uh, if we want to prove SHA, then it's essentially a SIMD circuit because the prover can pre-compute like uh, the witness of each, like a single modular, like a single compression function. And then can prove all of them in parallel and then just do some kind of a consistency check. So we first wanted to kind of uh, construct a protocol that can actually support the SIMD circuit. So in order to uh, support SIMD circuit, what we want to do is that we want to extend the concept of uh, information theoretic message authentication code to authenticate a polynomial instead of uh, instead, instead authenticating a, ma a message. So uh, so let's say if we have a, a vector that we want to uh, come like uh, to authenticate. So like uh, the vector can essentially be represented as a polynomial by polynomial interpolation. So we can interpolate the polynomial such that the i's the, the i's value give us like uh, is evaluated at uh, x of i. So now we want to generate. So we, we want a like a, a interactive protocol where the verifier is going to also provide a evaluation key like uh, this gamma, and and uh, and the two parties will still get a single value of mac and key such that their relationship is now like this. Okay. So previously this was a value, but now we we replace the value by the evaluation of the polynomial on a random point. Uh, so so F sub. I have one question. So you are looking for yeah. this pattern within the same circuit, right? Uh, yeah. So we are looking uh, like uh, we are looking at this pattern in the in the same circuit. Yeah. Okay. So if it doesn't, uh, uh, if you don't get uh, many such patterns in the same circuit, then uh, the technique doesn't work, right? So uh, uh, so if we have if the if the if the whole statement is essentially B copies of this circuit and this circuit has size C, then the then the then the protocol has communication big B big O big O of B plus C. So computing B number of copies of circuit of size C has communication B plus C. Nice. This is when the circuit has structure. And if the circuit doesn't have structure, this will be like uh, be reduced to C to the power of 0.75. So this is for general circuit, and this is for SIMD circuit. I see. But what about yes. them, if you try to uh, uh, work on many circuits, then you can, let's say, P copies of uh, of your circuit, the same circuit, P copies of them. Yes. Your friend. Then also yeah, then, then we can, then, then it would be like this, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So, so if so, if you have the same circuit, or if you have the uh, if you have a b number of circuit or b number of sub circuit, then the that part of the communication would be b plus c. And if there's no structure at all, then the communication would be c to the power of 0.75. So, so this one doesn't. Also, do you have an improvement over the earlier one? Like this c power 0.75. Is this an improvement over the earlier work? Uh, well, so the earlier work uh, with the like uh, the earlier work in the line of vector OLE based the circuit uh, ZK, uh, all of them are like a linear uh, to the circuit size. I see. Yeah. yeah so so in, so in Antman we have two protocols. The first protocol is uh, specifically for SIMD circuit, and it is uh, uh, like uh, to prove uh, to prove b number of copies of a circuit of size C. It has a b plus C. And this could be compiled to support arbitrary circuit. And in that case, if the circuit is like uh, any circuit would give uh, would require CSC to the power of 0.75 uh, communication. Uh, I, I, su I assume like uh, you get the, the answer you want. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, yep. So so this is the first building block that we want to get. Uh, well, so if we can compute it, it's actually very nice because it's actually linearly homomorphic, and uh, well, the, the output uh, like uh, so it's like it uh, so it's, but like uh, computing it actually is uh, is somewhat uh, not a trivial. It's like uh, well, the input size is very large, so we need to kind of uh, we need to do some things like a uh, like a special to be able to actually compute it with very small communication. So what we actually end up doing is that uh, we ask the verifier to compute 
homomorphically encrypted uh, encryption of uh, of powers of gamma. So the verifier is going to compute gamma of one up to gamma of the D, um, gamma of B, and then send the encrypted version, like additively encrypted version of this value to the prover. And then the prover can evaluate f of x on, on top of this easily by just using additive homomorphism. And then they can just like, uh, and uh, by uh, by doing a small trick, they could actually get the authentication of the homomorphically encrypted value easily. Well, of course, like the verifier may not send the correct uh, encryption of these powers, but uh, that can actually be like uh, be easy, easily checked uh, using a, a small trick that we mentioned in the paper. So the checking this is not that expensive. So once we have this uh, like a uh, polynomial authentication code, then we need to do this zero knowledge proof. And uh, so now, like, uh, so every wire is actually compute is packed into one authentication. And uh, like, uh, we can still use the same paradigm. We are going to go through all of the gate one by one. And if it is an addition gate, we can just uh, do additively homomorphic uh, addition on top of this kind of uh, uh, in, like uh, commitment because it also supports uh, addition, like uh, addition. And for modification, we are still going to use the same idea as that. That is, we are going to allow, we are going to let the prover to commit to the out, like the output vector first, and then we are going to check the like the like the, the consistency. So now, so we are essentially given all these three pairs of uh, three three sets of values. Like some of them are belongs to prover, some of them are belongs to verify, and we want to check that uh, the the like uh, this vector x modi like a vector point like a pairwise uh, multiply y vector y equals to pairwise multiply z. So what, how, we, how we can do this, I mean, the idea is kind of uh, similar to uh, BGV, or uh, sorry, you can see it's kind of similar to uh, like a, like a uh, BGW, if, you, if, if, we, if we think about it in some perspective, okay? So what we do is that we are going to let the prover also commit to, uh, to one more like a uh, value, which is essentially the authentication of a higher degree polynomial. Which is a part, which is a modification of the two polynomials. So this polynomial is actually a higher degree polynomial, like uh, than z. However, like uh, this, like uh, this polynomial and this polynomial should share the first uh, n, like a uh, first uh, b coordinate, because like uh, well, because like uh, f z tilde of one equals to f x one times f y one, which is supposed to be f z of one. So, uh, so, so our check actually works in two steps. The first step is that we are going to check that uh, this polynomial, uh, so this authentication and this authentication indeed multiply to this authentication. And the second step is that we are going to check that uh, this polynomial and this polynomial share the first n coordinate, uh, share the first n like uh, points like on coordinate one to n, uh, well on some public set of coordinates. And then, like these two steps would allow us to compute, uh, like uh, to check the like the correctness. So for this check, for the first check, it's actually like uh, not very easy. But we realize that uh, if we review gamma, then actually it becomes a very cheap check, just like what we need in the quicksilver. So uh, so what we do is that we are going to let the prover commit all of the messages that the prover needs to commit, and after that, we are we are the verifier is going to review. Uh, gamma at that point is actually safe to review gamma uh, because like we no longer need the uh, need a certain property of the polynomial and uh, and then like uh, like the consistency between these two polynomial and this part of two polynomial can be just checked with a constant uh, uh, if like uh, overhead and then the next step is just to check that uh, these two authenticated polynomials share the same uh, set of values on the first n coordinate and uh, this and this uh, this relationship is actually sacrificable Meaning that if we have a random correlation that satisfies the relationship, we can use one to to sacrifice. We can sacrifice one of the relationship to check the other one. So like uh, so we can essentially just like review like uh, the linear combination of the two polynomial and and check whether the resulting polynomial satisfies the relationship. So that's like uh, another that's kind of a, also a kind of a quick check that we can do to check that uh, these two are, are like are correlated are, are consistent. Yeah, so we, these are the two uh, properties that we need to check. And uh, if, like for this, we use Quicksilver by revealing gamma, and this one is checked by just like doing a linear combination. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, uh, just as what I said. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so in terms of the so in terms of the uh, communication, it is big O, 
it is big O B uh, plus B like a, a plus standing the B like a, like a, like an encryption at the, very, at the very beginning. The computation has a log B factor because we need to do the like interpolation on the polynomials, and the memory usage is also like is linear. Uh, so it's sorry, it's actually should be B. So it's a typo. It's actually uh, it's actually li linear to B. The batch size uh, and the plus like uh, at times the the memory that is needed to evaluate the uh, evaluate the circuit, and it can be generalized to arbitrary circuit uh, with some kind of uh, like a performance reduction. So essentially, what we do is that we can just like uh, squash the whole circuit. I mean, regardless of how the circuit looks like, we can always squash the circuit into just one layer of so one layer of modification and addition, and then we can just commit them in batches. And the and the prove the multiplication and addition easily, and and in the end, it's really just about how to prove the consistency of wires among different batches of gates. Uh, so for that, we actually what we do is that we can like uh, although it's not clear how to check like uh, like uh, all of them at the same time, we just check like one of the consistency between two batch of values at a, like at one time. And let's say if we, if we have a batch size of b, then they are totally b square or like. A, Types of consistency that we need to check, and uh, each check would cost uh, like a B uh, communication. So that would uh, that that means that we actually need to, to to check all of the consistency. We actually need to perform B cube a number of amount of communication. So the total communication is actually the total circuit size divided by B because like the the multiplication can be can be checked in batch, and then plus B cube, which is the consistency. And then you're like, and then we can set B like, to be like a C to the power of one over four to get the best uh, like a like a communication we can get. Uh, the drawbacks there are a lot of drawbacks of this uh, scheme. It's like not very concretely efficient, and it's uh, is not free, and it's like kind of a very cumbersome to to actually implement. We actually didn't implement this one because this is a kind of a like a not very like a concretely efficient. But uh, but like at least like we show that it's actually doable. To get a sublinear communication, even for like uh, this kind of interactive variant. Yeah, uh, but we we indeed implemented the, uh, the SIMD uh, circuit, and uh, like uh, like uh, when, like as we increase B, we can actually like uh, amortize the cost of uh, each gate actually goes down. Well, because this is because the, like uh, because like the total communication is B plus C, and it is divided by the total number of gates, which is B times C. So as the B increases, like uh, it's actually the communication per, per gate actually decreases. And for Quicksaver, it would be always one field element per gate. Uh, by kind of uh, using like, kind of by using like a, like a lattice based uh, linearly homomorphic encryption, like a sufficiently smart, we can actually also kind of get uh, like a decently good uh, running time uh, in terms of the computation. It's like uh, hundreds of nanoseconds of uh, running time per, per, per gate per gate. Uh, yeah, and uh, like uh, and our and our circuit uh, and our protocol would get uh, uh, better per, better performance as like the network becomes smaller and smaller. When the network is small, the communication would be bottleneck, and in that case, we actually get much better performance. And uh, if the communication is uh, higher, then actually we won't be as good as uh, like uh, as Quicksilver. Yeah, so uh, that's all for the uh, presentation. And uh, I'm like, uh, if you have any other questions, I'm. Uh, I'm happy to answer.